In this video, I'm only showing one small demonstration of what this thing can do. So if you wanna learn more, go to mortismaster.com and you can see examples of some other creative tasks that this can accomplish. Hey folks, how you guys doing? Hope you're all having a great day today. In this Tool Talk video, we're talking about creating mortises for loose tenon joinery. Well, mortises for anything for that matter, specifically with this Mortis Master, the Mortis Master. <laughs> Uh, this is, well, well, first, full disclosure, um, I have absolutely nothing to gain or lose whether you do or do not buy one of these. No affiliation with the company, no affiliate links at all, not being paid to make this video. I was simply asked to check one of these out by the uh, person who puts these together and sells them. Uh, and I said, sure, I'll check it out. I like what I see. And I think that this could be beneficial to a lot of people out there. So I figured, why not give uh, an honest man trying to make a living some free promotion? There's six main components to this mortise master. There's two uh, jaws or two main bodies. There are two adjustable stop blocks. There is the sliding plate that goes back and forth. And then there is the guide bushing that you stick in your router. This is a very common style guide bushing. So you will have to have a router, a plunge router that accommodates these types of bushings. Very common though, nothing special here. This guide bushing fits inside this hole to perfectly locate your router every time and allow you to actually cut the mortise. So how does this work and why is this really cool? Well, many reasons why it's pretty cool. Uh, number one is this particular plate right here allows for perfect spacing, depending on how you set this up. So if you want, in this case, I have these two holes selected and by selected, I just mean on this other side, there are some blocks that are screwed in place. And with these two particular holes selected, no matter the distance between these jaws, the center of the router bit will be perfectly centered in between the jaws. So you'll know that your mortise is perfectly centered on your stock. Pretty nifty. If you want a specific offset, well, this comes with a uh, guide, as far, uh, a documentation to let you know which particular holes to choose so for instance, if I take this one out and stick it into, let's say this hole, then that'll give me a, well, in this case, quite wide spacing off center. And there's, there's a combination of all the different holes that you can choose to get a precise spacing off center uh, for all the mortise options that you want. So it's not limited to just perfectly centered mortises. So that's really cool. Take this off and you'll have a center line scribed right here on this jaw. So you can uh, mark the center of your joint and line it up with this center line. I'll show you that in just a second. And then you have these two blocks, which are stops to establish the width of the mortise. On this side of these stops is another block that goes inside this track to keep these pretty perpendicular, pretty much perpendicular to this face over here. And then of course, you can once you establish your width, you can lock the, these in place and then your material goes in between. The other jaw comes in place like so, pinch it with your hand, lock the other jaw in place. And then you'll probably wanna add another F style clamp or some other type of clamp right here to really pinch this to stop your material from slipping. And then you can place your router on like so with the guide bearing. And as so long as you are lined up center with this line and your stops are set perfectly, you can batch out all of your mortises, take your material out, slide the next one in, clamp it down, batch out another mortise and so on. So it's just one setup with the machine, or I'm sorry, one setup with the jig, and then you can batch out all of your identical mortises on all of your pieces uh, well, as quick as you can with a plunge router. I've got two pieces of plywood just for the sake of an easy demonstration. And let's just say that I want to join them like so. Well, first step is to determine your material width, one and three quarters of an inch, which means the center of the joint is seven eighths of an inch from this edge. So seven eighths of an inch from this edge, I struck a center line. That's really all you need for the layout. And of course, the same thing on this face. Now, how wide do we want this to be? Well, if it's, if it's one and three quarter, then judging by this tape measure, I guess about one inch, I guess about one inch wide looks appropriate. Setting up the jig is, is pretty easy. And once you do it one time, 
then you could batch out all of the mortises. So keep in mind here that we're, we're basing everything off of the center line here. We're cutting the joints based on the center of the joint and we're lining everything up with the center of the jig. So that means we're going to basically determine our travel on either side. So if we're working off the center, everything needs to be divided by two for this side and this side. So how much travel do we need? Well, if we're using a quarter inch router bit and we want a one inch total width, then one quarter of an inch plus three quarters of an inch in travel equals a one inch long slot, mortise. So our travel is three quarters of an inch. And again, we're, we're working off this side and this side. So three quarters divided by two is three eighths. So now we need to make sure that we travel three eighths on this side, three eighths on this side. And this is actually really easy. This particular plate that comes with the jig is six and a half inches in diameter. Half of that is three and a quarter inch. As you can see, I wrote it right there. So three and a quarter inch from either side. Just to save a little bit of setup time, I've gone from the center line, marked three and a quarter of an three and one quarter of an inch, and put a line three and one quarter of an inch over here and struck a line. So that's the plate itself. And again, we need to travel three eighths this way, three eighths that way. Super simple and super easy to set this up. Simply set our our uh, stop over here three eighths of an inch away from this line and clamp this down, go to this side, three eighths of an inch away from this line, clamp it down. And now I know that if I set this back in place, I will have a total travel of three quarters of an inch. As I can verify right here, three quarters of an inch. So three quarters of an inch in travel plus the diameter of the bit equals a one inch total width mortise based upon this center point. So now all of the pieces can be slid into place by sliding this jaw out, sliding our material in. And this face down here on both sides is actually a rabbit. So there's a lip on the inside here that the material can reference off of. So I'll pull this up in between both jaws and line up, let me switch hands here. Actually, I'll just go over here. Line up the center line of the joint with the center line of the jig. Like so. Clamp it with my hand and then lock down the other jaw. Now at this point, it's tight enough that way, uh, if, if you have it really tight, you can still slide this out and put the next piece in. So you slide that out, put the next piece in and you're ready to go. Uh, to line it up, but to actually make your cut, you do want to put an F-style clamp or something over here to really lock all of this in place. Like I said, you do want to use a, a clamp to hold this together, so as you're actually plunging into your material, it's, it's not going to want to make this piece wander. But if you have a vise, a very fast way to batch out a lot of these is to just use your vise in conjunction with these, uh, these plates, if possible. And what I mean by that is, in my particular setup, completely unplanned, but really cool, uh, this can set in place so that you can swap material in and out, get the next piece in, lined up with that center line, lock it down with your vise, make your cut, batch everything out pretty quick without having to move the, the uh, jig, and yeah, very, very fast and convenient if you have a vise with the jaws that'll accommodate this. If not, you can still use the vise as a simple clamp just to hold things in place rather than using the F-style clamp. But what if you don't have a vise at all? You can still clamp to the top of the work surface. And let me set that up and I'll show you. Here at my assembly table is another handy setup. I've got the piece clamped in with an F-style clamp. And over here on the edge, I can use a parallel clamp or any other clamp for that matter. Uh, stick my knee into it at the bottom to hold the bottom of that. Slide this around so it's hanging off the work table and then clamp it in place. And with this setup, I'm fully supported by this clamp over here as I'm working on the, the jig. And I can, you know, grab my router, make my mortise, set it back down. And I have both hands available to 
work with the material and this clamp over here. So I can slide it out, relocate my material, and I have access to the bottom of the jig over here, so I can use that to assist locating the piece, and then clamp it in place, grab my router, make my cut, set it down. Anyway, this is a very fast and convenient setup once you have the jig set one time for the particular size mortise that you are cutting. Well, overall it's fast, it doesn't matter, it doesn't take much time to set this as well. But anyway, this is two setups, or three setups, I guess, for bringing the material to the jig. You can also bring the jig to some material. If the piece is in a vise and you're bringing the jig to the piece, then it's even more convenient because gravity is working in your favor. Uh, you're setting something on top of your material rather than trying to set something up into the jig. So gravity is in your favor here. Slide it where you need it, clamp it down, make your cut, slide it to the next one, make your cut, slide it to the next one. Uh, very much more convenient. Not only for panels, but I would imagine for something like this as well, because again, gravity is working with you. So you can set it in place, clamp it down. And I think this is kind of a bad example because this particular piece of plywood is pretty flimsy. I guess I'd have to lower that in the vise a little bit. It is clamped, but the, the plywood below this is flexing. Hmm. Let's see. Well, what if we do that? A little bit less flex, but that doesn't matter really because uh, the jaws are maintaining parallel with the faces and that's really all that matters so that the mortise is parallel as well. Plywood is just a bad example. Anyway, I think you've seen enough of me talking, so now let's see this actually working. So I only needed two of these cut, two mortises cut to demonstrate this joint, but I cut three and that's because, I don't know if you noticed, but I think on one of them, at least one of them, I think I made the cut full depth, uh, which is not what you want to do. You want to take smaller bites, more smaller bites is generally better. Um, but this is poplar core plywood, which is really soft. And as I was pushing the, the router through, I wasn't getting much resistance. So I think I went full depth. Anyway, uh, after that, you make some floating tenon stock. In this case, got a piece of walnut here, just a piece of hardwood out of the scrap bin. 
uh, round it over the edges to match the radius on the router bit and sized the material so it's the perfect, perfect thickness for the mortise, but the width here needs to be, in my opinion, about 1 16th of an inch less than the width of the mortise, and that's for wiggle room. Once you have this, you cut it down to however long you need, and as you can see, I've got one sitting in here, and <clears throat> so the 1 16th of an inch wiggle room is to allow you, well, it's to allow you to wiggle these back and forth a little bit during assembly. So let's just say that you're off by just a little bit on milling one of these slots. You're off by, well, up to a 16th of an inch, and you put it together, reference faces, put it together something like this, where you've got a big, it's not lining up, right? Well, if you make your, your loose tenon stock 1 16th of an inch less, then you have a little bit of wiggle room to slide these where they need to be as you're doing the assembly. Because really the main, the main uh, strength here is the glue on these wide faces, the wide face of the tenon and then the wide face inside the mortise. Once you glue it all together, it's pretty darn strong. Mortise and tenon joinery is really strong. And I think my daughter is waking up from her nap, so I gotta cut this short, um, as I hear on the baby monitor. Where was I going with this? Uh, yeah, anyway, loose tenon stock, or loose tenon joinery, floating tenon joinery, slip tenon joinery. It could be called many different things, and it could be made many different ways with expensive tooling and a little bit less expensive machinery tooling. Uh, in this case, this jig, I think, is reasonably priced for what you get. Really nice quality setup. And I just think it needs to have more eyeballs on it. So if you're interested in trying something like this, definitely look into this system. Like I said, I've got nothing to gain or lose whether you do or do not buy this Mortis Master Jig. Uh, I just think it's uh, well done and needs more eyeballs on it. So you guys take care. Have a great day. I'm probably about to go change a stinky diaper. <laughs> so I'll see you in the next video.